hello you want to do Jan Hubert and you've come to the wrong place so uh, let's start uh, I am using DaVinci Resolve everything that I'm gonna use will be in the free version uh, the paid version will just work better faster stronger yeah. uh, so you make a new project here and name it like something I, I just made mine so I'm gonna go shkabot into my project I will link you the file so you have all this stuff so it, it's easy to like this is the media this is the edit this is the VFX this is the color and this is the exporting so you go to the file stuff and you find the file that I will uh, send along the tutorial on a Google Drive I advise you to use your own files, but uh, I guess not everyone has uh, a cinema camera. It's easier with a cinema camera because you can you can have fun with color space and it's, it, yeah, uh, you have more grading options, color correction. But you can totally do it with your phone, and uh, that's that will work too. So. You just cut up it into your project. Uh, the black magic has uh, these black lines on the top and the bottom because the format doesn't match. So you go into file, project settings. Uh, this is the right thing, but you go image scaling and scale for frame with crop. And this is just gonna like zoom in. Oh. Here is, it's not gonna show up when I go look at this the black bars are not here because it just zoomed in the footage a little bit So if, if you have black bars, that's that's what you can do Yeah uh, Yeah So uh, the first thing is to trim the footage like from from the the place you wanted to start and and <laughs> uh, so you just see I want him to go inside I don't know from here because he's gonna be there is gonna be a corridor here so he's gonna be behind the wall right now from I don't know right here and you just trim it then you go to the end and you trim the end okay it, it looks uh, good <laughs> okay you go to the fusion page where all the kind of magic fa happens uh, to make the the navigation in the fusion page uh, easier I usually go to fusion fusion settings user interface and just click this twice and this will make your scroll wheel go make make it zoom uh, and not go up and down which is uh, the same way as blender works which is cool it's pretty cool so uh, I also like to organize my notes vertically um yeah so let's go to a frame where he is visible we can do a key for example here yeah and let's prepare the footage for 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 keying because it's it's a little washed out as you can see uh we probably should denoise that but i am not gonna do it because i'm not gonna do it uh, yeah, so you go shift space bar and this will make like a, a pop-up with everything you can add, like every node is here. So you type color corrector, map, and you just lift the contrast a little bit, not too much, and the saturation.
I don't know something that, that feels right. That's that's totally up to you. So uh, you have the color correct already. In order to make the the lines more happy with being, uh, because you know normally you organize the nodes like this, but uh, in order to make the the lines happier, you can go options, uh, right click options, uh, build flow vertically. And also in order to, oh okay, yes. Uh, in order to arrange the nodes close to each other, you can select these two, and this this will make them snap and generally make you look more professional, uh, which is good. Uh yeah. So after the color corrector, this is like as uh, a base, so. Uh, you click the color corrector, go shift space bar and type delta here. This is like the uh, the thing that will separate the greenness and you just go boop. Uh, go as close to the actor as possible and just find a place that makes uh, everything behind the actor uh, checkerboards. This is not good because the bottom part is like half. This is not a good grain skin, <laughs> but uh, this is not good because the, the bottom half is half transparent. But this is pretty good, if I say so myself. Um, yeah. So this, this is already pretty good. Uh, you can click away because if gonna if you if, if if you have a node selected and you shift spacebar every anything it's gonna appear uh, on the next line we don't want that here because we are gonna make a polygon this is basically a simple mask here in resolve so you're just gonna draw around your person a really rough like shape yeah uh, and now you just go from uh, there is a cool thing you can uh, when you are doing the the, the connections you can uh, do it also with the right click when, it, when you do it with the right click you can just go here and it gives you the options to select which uh, which triangle you're gonna connect into because the colors mean something I always forget them so I am just gonna do it this way so this is the garbage mat because uh, this separates all the garbage here and your act which is totally not garbage uh, like honestly Okay, uh, there you go, garbage man. Oh, he disappeared. Why? Because the program correctly thinks that he's garbage. Shout out to the actor. <laughs> yeah, so you go into Delta here, mask, garbage mask, which is like the, the, they are talking about the input here. And you go invert, and look at that, all the garbage here disappeared. If you want to see how your mask is doing, you can select this and this will show you your alpha channel. This is wrong. We don't want that. So, uh, I'm gonna make like an easy version of this. Mm, you go into mat and you have threshold. Uh, you just go new it's the wrong one I see so you take the low one and you just cut up it this way and now there is speckles of shit here so you scar it the, the, the other way uh, I like uh, this time I will not care about everything there is another technique which will uh, which is much better I'm gonna show it in a second but this is like the, the easiest thing you can do 
and it uh, it, it kind of works. Look at that, it's, it's working, there is nothing. I guess there is a little things, but who's gonna notice? I mean, you, but uh, no one will know. And now we have the problem where the hair is just an outline, but most people will not notice when you have like crappy footage. Uh, so when I did the shot for the first time, I didn't know the other technique and it worked, so yeah. You can also go into tuning. Uh, I, I I have seen it in that technique, but you just hover around. Like here you have, uh, well, I mean, if you are over a color, you have all the color information. So you go over the, the brightest thing in your image. And uh, and position X is zero for eight roughly. So you are here and you just uh, take this until the X is zero for eight. I don't know what this does. It generally helps. So I don't know. Uh, you can also. Figgle Schmarigle with the the shadows thing. It's basically uh, because the green screen, uh, if you go to the pre mat which is before, uh, you want it to find all result like when you're rendering. So uh, you can see that uh, the green screen, the greens are reflecting on his, uh, his pants, trousers, depending uh, if you are fancy or not. Uh, yeah, uh, we we don't want that unless in your render you are gonna actually make the ground green, which is uh, or make like a green light uh, to complement that, and people will think that it was actually supposed to be that way. Uh, I don't know if you want, you can do it. If you don't want, you you don't have to do it. I, I generally, I think I'm just gonna, like, uh, because if if you're not gonna do it, it's gonna replace the greens with this disgusting uh, black dots. So uh, I'm just gonna like, go in the middle or something, I don't know, like this, mid-tones. Like generally, just just take uh, we we don't want that, but uh, like take something that's looking good. This doesn't look good, uh, so we can eat his like a little. Uh, yeah, okay. This is pretty good and good. Uh, you, you can have a little of this because no one will care. Uh, okay, uh, highlights. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, okay. We also don't want an outline, so we go into fringe, I think. Oh, or not? Are we? Are we done to that? Yes, this is a simple tutorial. I totally uh, made it not simple. I'm gonna link a tutorial for more advanced keying, which is more advanced, uh, and uh, it like gives you all the detail in the hair, here <laughs> in the hair, and everything. It's it's really cool. Uh, I. I I'm not, I'm not do that, so, uh, yeah. And uh, in the places where, like, I, I don't care about the lamp, I'm gonna just uh, cover the lamp otherwise. So, uh, anyway, uh, you can play the clip, see if, if it's wrong or not. I mean, there is some speckles of crap, I guess you could do it with the tuning or not. I don't know. Do I look like I am a professional? I am not a professional. 
uh, and just run your guy on an internet. I'm I don't know what to do. Uh, okay, and this this seems about right. Uh, so then you you have your your polygon, uh, and this is the not fun part because it is gonna bring up the window, and you have to like frame by frame just frame your person so he's in the in the thing uh, it's it's really not uh, pleasant so I'm gonna do it again because I have already done it for the real thing uh, I, I, as I said you, you need to be like really rough with it it's it's it doesn't make much but you should care if you care if you just practice don't care it's just my advice uh, okay so this boot is a bit of bingo okay yeah we you can select everything and just cut a bit here uh, now the fun, fun part begins. Okay. Uh, As you can see, I am having fun. This is what I am gonna do in the future. Yay! Okay. Okay. He's going. He's going places. Wow. Okay. I'm probably gonna just make an uncut version and cut version. It's probably better thing to do, but uh, yeah. Uh, wah, 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 wah. Yeah, this is also pretty handy to to turn on the, the alpha channel. Oh, uh, I have made something. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. So <laughs> let's stick to the alpha. Uh, he's standing there good until he isn't. Yay. And yay. And yay. Okay, let's let's see the key. I am not believing it that it's gonna be good. Why are you Z? I want alpha channel. Okay. Oh oh no. Uh control F, yeah. Control life is full screen. The more you know. Yeah, you you should be more careful with the key. I I am I am not gonna because I I am already tired of it. It's so tiring. Okay. Sky the working. If I say so myself. Oh, his hand is sticking. For example, here. 
so I can just do that uh, more please yeah Oh, that looks cool. That is like a banner on the Yuri or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. You you have that that edge here, but I I will not care. Also, you have like this fringe. You, you it's I don't know what it is, but uh, it's generally because of the. Let's go and see the nose. Because in the delta here, you you had fun with that, and you might you might want to like dial it up. I'm gonna link the tutorial. It's it's like eleven minutes, and it explains it much better than I do. So uh, yeah, uh, that's that's what what you want to actually listen to. Okay, so you have the the thing, and it kind of works now we will need three exports of this uh, maybe even four wait okay I don't know let's see I'm gonna click uh, alt click on the footage and hold to copy it now here I'm gonna go into fusion and just delete everything except for the color correction Bop. and now we have the thing it's 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 doing the thing so this will be the footage that we're, we're gonna track and this is the footage we're gonna pop into blender so uh, mm, yeah this this one we don't want alpha uh, I think we can hit export okay Let's go to the little rocket because we know when you're exporting goods, it's gonna be in the rocket. It's I don't know. Uh, Elon Musk invented the software, you know. I uh, go to the the thing where you want the thing. So you make a folder, and in the folder it's gonna be uh, or maybe uh. DaVinci exports and in the DaVinci exports folder you're gonna have first tracking hell yeah and in the tracking we're gonna make tracking but and now when you can also add an underscore so it separates it we're gonna export it as a, an image sequence, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Ian Hubert says that uh, tiffs give him the best, uh, the, the best output. So I'm gonna select RGB eight bits. I don't know. I never tried to do the thing. So uh, yeah. Now in the file, you want you don't want uh, like so many digits. Clip starts at frame one. Yeah, you want like I don't know four digits in file name. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's it's interesting. Render speed. Why? Okay. I don't know what everything does here, but we're gonna individual tr uh, clips and uh, we're just gonna export the uh, uh, not alpha. So we are not gonna do alpha, and let's uh, let's export that. I don't know. Uh, okay, so you can go like in the middle of the clip you want to export click X and it's gonna uh, Make the in and out of the render range Range uh, you can also do it manually, but I don't know I do it with the X uh, You do you um, Yeah Okay, everything is set up right I think Okay, it's tracking Okay, add to render queue and it's in the render queue and you go render all. 
it's gonna render a while without the studio version already super good to computer I don't know I don't care so now in the folder you just created uh, here DaVinci exports tracking you will have everything in tiffs uh, and it's important to have everything in in images because then Blender doesn't care what is the frame rate. It's gonna sync everything right. So you you don't need to know why it's in it's in that, but it's in that, and that's what's important. Okay, so uh, now we have the tracking footage. Let's now export the the thing uh, we are gonna export it in three or two resolutions uh, the highest one is gonna be 1920 by 1080 and you're just gonna click export alpha and I don't know what that means I think that uh, it means that like on the edges, it's gonna be kind of transparent, but also not transparent. I don't know. We keep it messy, and also it. I, blah, 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 blah. Now we just go here and select or uh, make a new folder along the tracking one, and this is gonna be the uh, the green screen kid kid. Yeah, and he it's gonna be uh, 1920 by 1080 and he's gonna go select folder and here you're gonna go uh, green screen uh, do, uh, uh, green screen underscore high res underscore yeah and this should, all the settings should be remembered from the last one. So you can so, uh, remember to select the export alpha because it's not gonna export the alpha or why then you want to export the alpha. So you go with the render, it renders. It's gonna take a little longer, but when it renders, I'm just gonna go to the folder again and it should be displaying it like it's transparent when you move it. Look at that, the dude is in the foreground. It's it's cool, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we have everything here. And this is pretty good. Now we, we have exported it in the high resolution. So we're just gonna go scatterbapa beep. And you go 72480 and uh, also export the alpha. But now we're gonna uh, select all like in the green screen kit. We are just gonna go and say it's 720 uh, underscore 480 for being organized. So you select the folder and now it's green screen uh, as the um, oh it's uh, LR as a low resolution. You can name it what you want. I shouldn't be the one that says what you need to do. So uh, everything is remembered from the last one. It's green screen key 720 480 so we just go shkabaraba pee pee poo and it's exporting um, kind of weird but you you don't need to worry about the artifacts because it's just gonna be for the uh, for the viewport when you're gonna render we are just gonna swap this for the high res version and it's gonna work flawlessly. Hell yeah. Okay, so now uh, I, I I have closed it again. 
It's not in quick thing. Okay, we go footage, green screen tutorial, Da Vinci, green screen kid. Yeah, and this one also exported kind of good. Okay. Um, yeah, now we need to set up the Blender file. So, uh, you can save the, the thing here, close it, and go into Blender. I am using 3.1 wine. <laughs> I am using 3.1.2 and yeah, let's turn the screencast keys on. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, it works. Uh, you need to open with, uh, you know, select general and everything. And you will have uh, some stuff in the scene, like a cube and the, and the light. I, I don't like that, so just click A, X, and delete everything. Because we don't need that. Okay. Now, you go on this little plus button. You just go plus, uh, VFX, motion tracking, uh, scrub it and open. Find the footage that you just exported from DaVinci and uh, go in the tracking folder. Now select the first frame, click A to select everything and click open clip. And now uh, click set, set scene frames. It's gonna set up the range of the frames and go prefetch. It's gonna load the footage into your RAM uh, memory. So it just plays I mean, it doesn't, but so it plays kind of nice. I don't know why it doesn't. I'm just going to play it that way. Uh, yeah. Uh, and now you also here in this tab, this is the tab where you set up all the, the cameras, like the all, the all the settings of the export, so like the, the formats and everything. Uh, you need to set the frame rate to what you recorded with. I have recorded with 25 because I live in the third world country. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now, I have just... I, I can't do tracking for shit. But I have just watched a tutorial from Default Cube. And Default Cube can do tracking. So, I'm just gonna like uh, not care about it. I'm just gonna link the tutorial because it's much better than anything I could do. Same as with the green screen. And uh, I will just make it myself. You're gonna make it yourself. And we are gonna meet when you will track the footage and get like a solve. Mm, so yeah, uh, bye bye, <laughs> I guess. Oh, I should probably turn the fonts down. Okay, so you just tracked the footage. Uh, like you, you, you did the the, 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 the tutorial, uh, the CG matter thing. You just hit solve camera motion, uh, didn't you? <laughs> Okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, after clicking the soft camera motion with the focal length enabled, uh, we are gonna click setup tracking scene. Now it set up the tracking scene. Who could have guessed this is how it works? Okay, so we click the three little things. Okay, uh, this is, these are my trackers. Uh, you can uh, you can like get it way below sixty four. 
I I would go below 64 if I was doing this tutorial. Uh, but I I I just I I don't have time for that. Uh, and I don't have the life force. It it took about I don't know 40 minutes. I don't know. These are the tracks. I'm gonna release the the project file along with the with the thing with the footage. It's gonna be on the Google Drive. So we click three of the trackers that I on the or on the ground. It's important so they are like uh, on different axes. So because this is gonna figure out. This is gonna just select three of them here and just stick them to the ground and uh, make this a ground. So uh, n no one could have guessed this is how it works, right? So you go floor and now when I go into here, it's really big. So uh, what we do, uh, we select two of the trackers. Uh, I guess I will make this one the, the origin. So yeah, the origin is here. Uh, this one will be the y-axis. This just set up the, uh, you know, the the scene here. So uh, you know, so the line here is along the line here. Uh, I do simple stuff. And look at that, the three trackers here. This one, this one, and this one are on the ground. And this one where we set the origin. It's in the origin. Who could have guessed this is how it works? I should probably stop saying this. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Ooh, select two trackers. And this is like roughly, I don't know, two meters, I guess. So we go here, set the distance to two, go set scale. And now in the scene, it's two meters exactly. This is really handy to set out, you know, the scale and stuff. Uh, now that we we have everything tracked and everything is good and everything is beautiful, we can go into the layout. Here we can turn on the motion tracking, maybe make the dots a little less to our face. And just cut up the, the, the thing uh, uh, when you click. Sh oh, the, the screencast keys are not on. Okay, when you click Shift Z, uh, when you are uh, in the. We go G, Shift Z, it will move the, the thing only on the Y and X axis. Uh, so, the good way to see if your track works is to place it on the ground, go into wireframe, and just play the clip. And if it sticks to the ground well, that means you did a great job tracking. Damn, it really does. Okay, I am really nervous for the last part though. Hey, this is like no error, okay. Uh, this is way better than what I did for the actual shot. So yeah, uh, let's go into solid mode and let's uh, let's add the the finger a material. It's gonna be a new material with checker. Okay, uh, now you are here, you are in the material, in the shading workspace, go into edit preferences and type no the wrangler and turn it on here or and like click self save preferences and you can just go control T and it will make you a little mapping now and in texture coordinate. Then you go into object vector. And I don't know if it works, it doesn't. Mm. Well, I'm just gonna make a new plane. <laughs> okay, and this one, please work, please. 
check her texture, just plug that sucker into the color. Hell yeah, it works. That means I am not stupid, which is good. Uh, oh, wow. You can still do the node wrangler thing, uh, where you just plug the object to the vector. And now, even if you are scaling it in edit mode, it won't change anything. So if you want to scale it, just go here in the in the te checker texture thing. Okay. Mm. So now let's import our person, shall we? So uh, you also need to make like to, to, to turn on the add-on for that. It's called images, uh, images as planes. Yeah. So you go import images as planes, and go into the green screen key into the, the lower resolution. You select everything, or just okay. Let's select all only the start frame. Uh, set it as emission with strength of one, uh, animate image sequ sequences, I guess that's all, yeah. So import it and let's see, uh, in the material, uh, let's see if it plays, it doesn't, okay. Go into shading workspace, okay, and here just change the single image to image sequence and like go nuts with the frames it doesn't really care it, it's just it just needs to be higher than the frames you are actually making so yeah uh, and now the sequence is animated you can even like go here and make it yeah uh, it's really fun so now uh, we can make a cube and make the cube roughly as high as uh, the actor, uh, like not the track high, like normal high. Uh, can it just go here and then go here and make it like with the shift Z thing, you can make a uh, scale shift Z, you can make it like a pole. Yeah. And now, um, let's choose where the actor should be compared to the camera. Uh, when we hide it, you can just slide around the thing uh, if you, you know, place it correctly. You can go into edit mode, select the bottom face, click Shift S and cursor to select it and then go uh, out of it and go set origin to 3D cursor. It makes the, the, the yellow dot here so you can you know play around with it from here. The important thing is that you can go, uh, you can go cursor to word origin and then selection to cursor, which just makes sure that the, the pole is touching the ground and it's flat. So, now let's align the pole roughly where this guy is standing. I don't know him. Uh, and you will need another add-on for what I'm gonna what I'm about to do. Uh, you go edit preferences, copy attributes menu. Yeah, so you just enable that also. You select your guy then you select your camera uh, control C and this will make you like a menu and here uh, you can copy the location and then control C copy the rotation now you just need to take this and click Y twice or Z twice and place it where where the actor would be in the scene, so it it would be like on the pole. Now in in the camera view, scale it so. Wait, something is wrong. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, something it is something is wrong. Uh scale it so it touches the top and the bottom and then scale it so it touches the left and right, I guess. I I I must have did something wrong. I don't know what because I am stupid. Now you can make the camera smaller. Viewport display smaller camera. Yeah. And the guy if you you need to turn off the, the background images. So you select the camera, go background images and turn this sucker off. And now this guy is like standing in the place. You can delete uh, or hide the pole with H. And look at that, he's kind of standing on a finger. Yeah. Now, uh, because we use edit mode in order to, to move the guy, you, the origin is here. And the origin is basically the thing that, you know, it scales from here. If you, uh, I don't know if annotations disappear. No, okay, that's that's good. Uh, if you uh, see the camera and like imagine that the field of view, which is represented with how with the lines here, let's go into orthographic view. The field of view just uh, goes along the line. And this goes along the line, and this goes along the line too. Okay, let's make another window, and here I will show you the camera view and how it works. Uh, so, okay, object mode. Okay, let's hide the the plane, and I will show you how it works. So we have our our thing, and since it has the same origin and it goes, it like rests on the lines. When you scale it, it just goes along the field of view. So here you can't see it scaling, but it's like just look at the thing you are looking at for a little longer, and you will just understand uh, when it. I, you could do it also by just, you know, taking it here and scaling it up. And it, it, you can see here that he's normal size. So, uh, this is like automated product process. And it makes it so uh, when the character goes away from you, you can just scale it up. And uh, I don't know if you can see. By, but if you scale it up here, you can see that his legs are clipping. And when he goes away from the camera, he just becomes smaller in the camera. So when you scale him up, you just align the legs and it, it works uh, magically. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as we know, it's magic. It was magic all along. So now it's let's start the boring process of going. Okay, I will delete the annotations. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, uh, mm, <laughs> that's so professional. Mm. <laughs> Will I have to Google that? I will have to Google that. That's so embarrassing. How to delete uh, annotations in the Blender? Uh, right click on selected annotation. Okay. Bap. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is embarrassing. Uh, 
Okay, we also uh, need the person to uh, by by moving the the thing here, like by scaling the footage, it it's away our dude. So you just align it so it barely it's his leg, and then you click the footage, so it's like it, then the camera, and click Control P, keep transform, and now. Look at the guys following the camera. Uh, let's go uh, to the frame where we aligned it. We select our footage. Uh, yeah, see if it's going. And just click this auto keying. Uh, but note that everything you do from now on is gonna be keyed. Like, uh, it's gonna be a key of animation. So, you just scale it so it barely hits his leg, you just keep where he's standing next, and now you eat that. Okay, you just keep to where he's next, and now you eat that. Uh, you can also do it backwards, I don't mind. Okay, he's standing here. So we'll just eat out his leg. Okay, now you just eat his leg. Okay. Is his leg eaten enough here? Heck yeah, it is. Okay, he's standing here again. Let's eat him. Hell yeah. He... Okay. Now there is another pose. So... Eat this also. It's another pose. So you just go and eat that. It's another... Wow, wow, wow. It's another pose. So you eat that. You can make the keyframes like uh, away from each other. It just basically every two steps you need to key. Yeah, that that's that's what I do at least, and it works. So it will work for you, I hope. If he's standing, you also need to do this because the camera may be moving, and in this case, it is. Thank like, yeah, okay, his boot is getting away. Okay. He's gonna be so famous after this tutorial. Okay. Beep. This is like this may be so boring as a tutorial. It's the worst tutorial ever, some would say. And I would say, no one asked, why are you watching this then? I told you, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, now he's Buddhas. Oh, the keyframe was wrong. Okay. Okay. And the last one is here. And now, if you if you see it from the side, look at that. He's like going with the thing, and he's the same scale every time, and it works flawlessly. If you see it from the camera view, it also like it it works. Uh, let's do it the 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 way, to the right way. Uh, in in this shot, he's standing. He's just standing in place, minding his own business. We know he's he's just standing here. So, uh, what you can do uh, is bring up your pole. Uh, for now, I will just leave it. So, uh, take the last pose where you think he's standing. Yeah, it's here. 
and now you are just gonna click 7 on the numpad uh, so you can see the top of you take your pole just slap it on him and now uh, you animate the scale along the, the pole so oh wait oh that's what I talk about the the, the, f the keyframes that are cl killing me remember uh, to turn it off when you are not working with this so you just skip a little and you make the plane here and you skip a little you make the plane here skip a little go 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 here 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 it kind of works I guess okay 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 it needs to be rough okay and now if we see this from the camera view oh Ooh. Uh, let's not see it in cycles now if we look at this and we like place the, the thing here he is just smiling his own business and he's walking and he's standing in place as he would be standing in place in our scene we did it everyone yeah now we can uh we can do the elevator because he's standing here for a reason and that is because he's in an elevator so uh we can just cut out the thing here uh, because we know he's standing on a on an elevator and just make it like here you can make the, the environment as you want. I'm just gonna make it as I want. Because this is my tutorial. I have the power here and you don't. And now we make a cube. And uh, the cube will be our elevator. So we place the cube under him. Maybe make it squished. And just make it barely touching him. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Go into the camera view. Damn. Looking handsome, looking good. Okay, now you add and you just uh, cursor to select it. Which makes the cursor go to the selected. Uh, oh, you first need to select the thing. I forgot. And now everything that you will spawn will be on the selected, on the cursor, because that's what cursors do. They spawn things. So you just make, uh, I don't know, an empty sphere. Maybe make it smaller. Yeah. And now you parent the, the, the slab to the, f the slab to the empty. Control P, keep transform. Then you parent the camera to the empty. Control P, keep trans. Uh, 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 maybe with constraint. Uh, constraint, child of. Oh, yeah, right. You need to uh, apply location. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, constraints. And now we just find a child of and take the empty. And now when I move the empty, it's gonna move the whole thing. And when I go to the camera view, it's gonna move the elevator. Yeah. And look at this. Uh, it's it's really cool. So uh, he's walking here, vroom, vroom, vroom. And now we make a keyframe for the thing. Uh, when he ends to touch, yep, and uh, location, and now he waits. So let's make, let's make him go up, shall we? We just go up, 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 or down, up. We are gonna go up. We are fancy. 
and now you can see that when he goes on the thing it goes up and then he just admires the view he is like right on the thing so we can copy the existing ground and make it go up uh, and when he goes off it we need to make his leg almost clip again so we are doing the same stuff again when he's just walking we need to make his leg almost clip yep and now look at that he's on the elevator he goes up and he gets off it's almost as if this was a dynamo trailer you can say because this is exactly what Ian Hubert did uh, but he did it better than me because I'm worse than him I'm not a blender god and he is a blender god so yeah you can make a wall because we don't want the stuff here we just want the character to, to go so let's do that and he goes around the corner uh, we also don't want the, the console thing uh, so the, the, the thing I did was just made a, a thing here like I don't know it's it, it was one key and no one ever noticed so I guess no one cares if it's one key because it can be wonky and no one will care yeah and you can make it like uh, here you can take those make them go up then you can take these and make them go up as well and now when you go look at that the console is covered with the thing uh, but we also want to see his legs because this is like a part of the illusion so we can make this squishy what a squishy console yeah I think here I think here and make them go down yeah yeah it kinda works isn't it it's working it's working mate and then he goes, so I guess we need to make it a little bit closer uh, maybe the bevel is, isn't helping <laughs> yeah uh, okay I'm just gonna make the the worst oh, I could also, okay I will delete the faces select that, delete and just make uh, a weird one okay and now should be walking right off the thing yeah you can uh, since this is an empty you can also make a keyframe like everything is pointed to this so you can make a keyframe for the rotation and uh, I mean first he's gonna be like this so we can make a keyframe for rotation and then when he gets off we want him rotated so it's rotated so you go here you go cut up maybe the okay maybe the okay let's do the location let's go crazy the rotation and now look at that he he also rotates when he's on the elevator then he gets off it's so cool yeah look at that it's like in the dynamo teaser but like explained wars <laughs> uh, yeah you can you can uh, when you are ready for rendering when you just popped here your all of your uh, assets you just go to shading then you uh, select your plane and you just uh, select the high-res version so you can go uh, green screen keyed and to the high-res version and now it looks suddenly oh, oh okay 
you need to make it an image sequence and with a lot of frames and suddenly it looks good look at that this look fantastic uh, yeah and all the reflections are supposed to be baked in we will see about that roughness down metallic up yeah look at that his legs are reflecting the thing oh so good i am amazed i i love this technique i love ian hubert he's so good let's all appreciate that we can we can do this kind of stuff also uh you, you probably seen it in the, the the tutorial of ian hubert you can make point lights that complement the lighting that was on the set so you can make this light like i don't know warm because he's look at that he has a he has a little light here and then you can copy it and here you can make a white or or even a blue light yeah and like make it here yeah this is cool and look at that he's like nicely implemented into the scene already and also he he walks to to the thing and he he has some purple lights so we can just pop a new light here with some purples and like make it not crazy oh yeah Make them go here and then parent the light to to the empty and then he goes up and we just uh, yeah we just uh, copy the lights and make it uh, shift D and make it the same here also, he walks straight up to the uh, to the plane I have placed, so we can change this light for a plane and rotate it here. Now we can make a new material, an emission material, which will be like I don't know yellow, uh, orangish, and now. When he goes to the thing, he's actually looking like he's lit by the thing. And when we pop in a monkey, as we all do, look at that, the monkey is also lit by the thing. And the, the monkey looks kinda implemented into the scene. Uh, I, I genuinely love this technique. It's so simple. And it works, it just works. Okay, it's closer to here, so let's make it like bam, and like we can make the monkey, the the Suzanne. We can make her, we can make her look at the guy and what he did, or maybe what he's about to do. I don't know. You are the you are gonna craft the lore for your story. I don't know. Yeah, and then he pulls out his gun and it's... yeah. When you have some green artifacts, like I had when you rewatch the final render I did, when I didn't know how to how to do it, uh, the, the gun has like uh, green outlines. So the thing you could do is just like make a plane here and make it green. And then, like, I don't know, like a wall that is all greasy and in, in like, is messed up. And it, it will totally, totally work because the green will just blend in nicely. Uh, oh, I just deleted the guy. Okay. Now, for the export, uh, because you will want to export it someday. Uh... You are gonna need some stuff. Uh, yeah, you go here into the format, 
Uh, if you are just happy how how with how it looks, you, you can just straight up uh, select I don't know JPEG PNG sequence and out uh, output the baby let it go in the in the internet hashtag Ian Hubert green screen and it will get ten thousand views. But also you can do it with the open EXR multi layer. Uh, and now uh here you have the the render passes uh you can uh make it visible so uh, the thing i just made visible is uh holdouts so now mm, we can just uh take our green screen and get it into the scene collection where is our green screen uh Oh yeah, it's in the camera. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, and now cl click M, new collection, and it will be the green dude. Green dude, yeah. And now we can make the green dude a holdout material. Well, you can select the film transparent and it will make the film transparent, it's that simple. So now uh, the dude is like uh, transparent and uh, this way uh, when you export it you can export one pass of the dude transparent and then just change up the, the stuff just make everything transparent uh, except the dude and now when you export this tool you can grade the dude and make him match the environment independently from the environment so uh, even the fancier way of doing this uh, would be to make a new uh, view layer uh, and name it the dude and then the foreground layer name it uh, the environment i can't write you know and here we're just gonna go to background and delete that uh yeah oh, 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 oh delete the background with the x yeah and this is like uh blender is gonna render the thing twice so uh let's make the dude pass as i call it let's make everything transparent except for the dude and in the environment pass let's make uh, every uh, let's make the dude transparent and everything else not. Uh, so yeah, when we hit F12 to render, it's gonna render the dude. Uh, uh, pro okay, that's too much samples. I I I can't afford that much samples. You know, we are low on samples right now, so we're just gonna go 32. Yeah, and you just click. Kaboosh, shrabush, and now look at that. It rendered the thing. Now he renders the dude. Uh, you go into the compositing. It's so wonky. Uh, we don't want that. So uh, this is this is the byproduct of uh, the, the the clip. So you just like take everything out except for the things here. Now you have the node wrangler uh, activated. So now look at that. Here you have the layer with the environment because it's named the environment and here you can just change it to the dude. Look at that. And now you click alpha over if you are doing it in, in here, which I, I am not advising not to. You can make just a color corrector, color correction. Oh no. Uh, Okay, hue saturation. Anything you will do here, it's just gonna make the dude change and like you know he's all messed up and he looks awesome. And you did nothing to the environment. So uh yeah, uh, when you're gonna export it to resolve it's gonna have all this information. It's gonna have uh, the alpha from the dude, it's gonna have the alpha from the thing and the depth from the thing. Uh, so this is like pretty much everything you everything you need and then uh, if you if you want to denoise the 
the environment, uh, you can just here uh, turn on denoising data and then uh, plug this into the composite and make a denoise node with the image plugged into an image normal to normal I albedo to albedo and now uh, when you render it again because now it's gonna render the noise so yeah let's render this suck it out again I guess and now if you go into here and uh, like make the viewer do stuff um, let's see yeah look at that it, the, the noise disappeared and now if you after this do the alpha over and just plug this into the the, the one and did the one and now everything should be denoised and the dude should be here yeah look at that it works it just works how does it happen i don't know yeah and then you just take it to your uh, editing software of choice and it just works so now uh, it will send because if you if you are rendering in the EXR for, format it's gonna save uh, all this like the image the alpha the image alpha depth denoising normal albedo blah 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 and also it's gonna uh, like save the composite as another pass so here we just basically we are re replacing the image with uh, the alpha with the composite i'm sorry and now uh, we we could probably uh, <laughs> we could probably uh, go into resolve and composite it i don't know yeah let's do that so let's uh Let's render the which frame. Uh, let's uh, render from frame two for two. Oh, it's going from here. Okay. Mm, let's go from the frame two for two. You're gonna render the whole animation, okay? I'm just gonna render this one, this this one frame a little because uh, yeah, that's that's why. Oh yeah, also. Before rendering, uh, you want to check all these fancy things like motion blur and uh, not simplify, but motion blur is fancy, I don't know. And now you can just hit render and it should render. I don't know if it doesn't render, it doesn't render, but uh, yeah. I am not gonna stop it. And I just, actually I'm gonna stop it. And now I'm just gonna go into resolve. Uh, so we save the file, we close the file. Uh, I definitely did not need to Google how to delete annotations. Mm. So yeah, now we go to Resolve. And in Resolve, we're gonna composite it simply so you can match the dude to the environment and everything. Like, it's, it's all good and cool and yeah, yeah. By the way, this wallpaper was made by Mid Journey, which is like crazy good, and I really like it. Yeah. So yeah, we can go uh, to the tutorial file where we uh, saved all all the stuff, and uh, when you uh, go into Media Pool and search for your thing. Uh, oh wait, <laughs> I forgot, yeah, uh, we are going back, <laughs> uh, I forgot to set up the, the output, because I am so smart, you know, you just set up the output to go, I don't know, uh, definitely not temporary, uh, you, you go here, I don't know, make, uh, a render file a file yeah 
in the render underscore yeah and now you render it again <laughs> i guess <laughs> oh, i am so stupid yeah you render it okay now you can go into resolve to the render file and here uh, you will have the whole clip i will have just just uh, the rendered file uh, so yeah we just pop that clip in here it's just a single frame for me but for you it will be a clip and yeah uh, we can again do the fusion thing where we make it m more better <laughs> i guess <laughs> and we take the layer composite combined for example in the layer composite combined uh, should give us just uh, okay it's me from the future it's not gonna be that easy so you go o c i o uh, color space i don't know color space yeah uh, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna link this dude's tutorial uh now you need to add uh, you need to find the 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 the, the, the data path for your Blender. So we go into uh, your program files to Blender, and then to uh, to the build your uh, program files. Yeah, and now go to the data files, color management, config, also OCIO. You go open. And now a source goes to linear and output goes to sRGB. How is it gonna look? Let's see. Yeah, and now it looks good. Uh, to output to, to see how, how the node is doing, you just click click to click click to yeah. And now you can just copy this setup, go control C, control V. And uh, this is not an intuitive tutorial. And here we can get the composite combined. And let's rename it with F2. This is the environment. And this is the dude. Yeah. And now we go merge. Uh, yeah, not here. Not here though. Not here either. And. Uh, and now the dude is going for the foreground and the environment goes for the background. And when we uh, see this, look at that, it kind of works. Uh, yeah, especially when we change that out, okay. Uh, we can also, uh, yeah, it's, it's merged. So now uh, if the dude is not matching the, uh, the environment, uh, we just click the dude, go shift space and go color corrector. Yeah. Now we can just go er razor a RGB with the dude. And he's not gonna know. Uh, zero. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that on a tutorial. Uh, yeah. And now let's see, uh, yeah, the saturation, I don't know. He's too blue, I guess. Yeah, and now he's not too blue, but now the environment is not matching to him. So we can do the same with environment, go color corrector. Uh, yeah, and now we can do the same with the environment. And the environment is also separated from the dude. Yeah, uh, and now, uh, no, this is wrong. God damn it! <laughs> now, after the merge node, we can also make like a little grade. So we can go color corrector here, and when we go color corrector here, it's gonna correct the whole image now. When we output the right node, yeah, and now it's RGB resonating everything. Uh, when we go out of the the fusion page. Yeah, in the uh, in the color tab, you can go here from from the fusion to here, and here you can do like your basic color grades, which is 
which is fantastic I guess yeah and now when you are finished you just deliver go mp4 and yeah you, you you just you just made an epic render as i said you just pop a hashtag ian hubert green screen green screen ian hubert tutorial blender vfx vfx blender blender 3d foundation um fruit blender i don't know it, the hashtag really worked by the way <laughs> Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, you can you, you can subscribe. You can like. I am trying to make it like a real thing. A dream would be if companies would send me the gear I want. <laughs> Imagine. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. I I struggled with it at first. You need. You just need to. Uh, you just need to to to, to make it. Yeah, then uh, when you make it enough, it's just gonna like be a talent, just that you have a skill that you just remember how to do. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.